last video, we looked at 4 by 1 multiplication, so 4 digit by 1 digit. In this one, we're going to look at 5 by 1 and beyond. So we'll look at, um, let's say, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 digits by 1, let's say by 6, and then we'll create a really fun problem to deal with, something like, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, let's put a 9 over here, times 9. And we'll solve that one using stack multiplication. Okay, so how does this work? Well, look back in the other four videos before this um, for some background in theory. Quick reminder, what we're doing really is taking the unit digit and then distributing it to all the place values above. So when you look at stack multiplication, take this one digit and kind of multiply and combine it, distribute it with all the the place values above. And what that allows us to do is to think about this complicated problem in terms of simple multiplication combinations. So 6 times 5 is 30. And in this method, when you have 30, you put the 3 in the tens place because it represents 3 tens. It's very important to line up the place value. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 3 is 9, so 39. But that 3 now represents 390, so put the 3 in the hundreds place. 6 times 7, really 6 times 700, is 42. Plus 3 is 45, but again, that really represents, represents 4,500. So the 4 goes in the thousands place. 6 times 8 is really 6 times 8,000. And what is that? Well, let's just write it over here to keep track. That is, well, if I have six eight thousands, I can think of six times eight, which is forty-eight. Um, but really, it's a thousand times bigger, so three zeros bigger, forty-eight thousand. Six times eight, I just put the eight here, forty-eight thousand. And oops, don't want to forget. This is a major mistake. I also 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 uh, this is a major mistake I often make when I'm using stack multiplication. I forget about the number up here. This four is another four thousand from before when we did 6 times 700 and we got 4,500. So we have to add 4,000 to 48,000 or think of it as 48 plus 4 which is 52. So we're almost leaving out and forgetting about the thousands place. 6 times 8, 48 plus 4, 52. And that's 52,000, so we put the 2 in the 1,000th place and the 5 in the 10,000th place because when we add 48,000 plus 4,000, that's 52,000. This is 5 ten thousands, and this is the 10,000th place. So we put that 5 here. And now we do 6 times 90,000. And the nice thing is we can think of that as 6 times 9. 54,000, or just 54, plus another 50,000. Well, 6 times 9, 54, plus 5, 59. Right? 59,000. Sorry, 590,000. So here, 6 times 9 is 54, plus 5, 59. Now, the 9 goes in the 10 thousands place, but that 50 is not really 50, it's 500,000. And I would put it in the next place, but, well, there's just a zero here, isn't there? I mean, 98,765 has no 100,000s in it. So if I put that 5 up here, which I could have done from the 6 times 9, being 54 plus 5 ten thousands, which is 59, or 590,000, that would give us 9 ten thousands and five one hundred thousands. So here we do six times zero, which is zero, plus five hundred thousand. So in other words, if you're left with a situation where you have six or a number times a place value, and you get something like 59, or you get something that goes into the next place, and there's nothing there, you could just write the number down. So six times nine, 54, plus five, 59. So there, the answer is 592,590. Now, part of this process becomes routine, and you stop to think about the background. 
the background in uh, mathematics, which can be dangerous. But, you know, with a problem like this, it is fun to see how the stack method can work through it without having to think about all of these huge numbers. So let's talk about that. 9 times 9 is 81. So 8, but 1, and then 8. 9 times 8, 72. Plus 8 is 80. So we put a 0 and an 8. You can see the 80 right there. And again, if I was to talk about the big numbers, you would say, oh, that's really 9 times 80, which is 720, plus 8, which is 800. So we put an 8 in the 100s place and a 0 in the 10s place, and we don't add anything to the 1s place. But I'm going to keep going. 9 times 7, 63, plus 8, 71. 9 times 6, 54, plus 7, 61, again. Let me double check that one. 9 times 6 is 54, plus 7, I'm going to write it out, even though I probably shouldn't have to. I'm not afraid to admit this. It's the same thing as 54 plus 6 plus 1. Okay, that equals 61. And before we had, a, um, okay, before we had 9 times 7, which is 63, plus 8, which was 63 plus 7 plus 1 which is 71. Okay, so we see a fun pattern here happening with ones, which is one of my favorite um, patterns by, for multiplying by nine, but anyway. So now what do we have? I'm losing track. So nine times five, right, we're distributing to each one is 45, plus six is 51. Nine times four, 36, plus five, 41. And look at this cool pattern, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, and all 1's across. And you can see with a long problem like this how important it is to keep track of where these numbers are. Uh, and, and I would even make it neater than, than I'm doing right now because you can really lose track of the problem. 9 times 3, 27, plus 4 is 31. 9 times 2, 18, plus 3 is 21. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. And then last, 9 times 9, 81, plus 1, 82. Wow. So, I want to point out something. In that last step, we, what were we really doing? It wasn't just 9 times 9, even though I was able to think of it as that. Here are the hundreds, the thousands, the millions, and the billions. And we got an answer that's, well, hundreds, thousands, millions, 82 billion. So we dealt with 9 times 9 billion as if it were 9 times 9, and that's some of the power of the stack method. So I hope, I hope we're beginning to see that. Thanks.